is Captain Chaudhary. Today I want to talk to you about the construction of GZ curve. How the GZ curve on the ship is constructed. What are what is the data that is given by the shipyard? Well, shipyard gives you the data in form of cross curves or KN curves. The tables are given for the displacement of the vessel. The displacement is taken as the argument. Uh, the KN values are correct provided the vessel is floating in salt water. The caution here is in case the vessel is floating in say brackish water or fresh water, what you must do is you must apply the increasing factor and the increasing factor is 1.025 divided by dock water density or fresh water density wherever the ship is floating. So this increasing factor you multiply with the displacement of the ship and whatever figure you get that is the figure for which you should see the KN curve. To understand the drawing of GZ curve, let me first explain what is the KN. So uh, let us see how you draw the diagram for the KN. Now these are the lines on your page. Here is a rectangular cross section you have drawn for the ship. Right? This is the midpoint of the water line. This is original water line. Somewhere in between here is the center of buoyancy. This is the line vertically upwards at initial water level, right? And as the vessel is inclined, this wedge moves here, this buoyancy wedge moves here, and parallel and proportional to this movement, there is a movement of B to B1. Now B to B1 is not parallel to any water line. B to B1 is parallel to the shift of the wedges, the centroid of the wedges, right? So this is the initial water line. This is the final water line as the vessel is inclined. Now, if I draw a line perpendicular to the final water line from B1, right? What I get at position G is the GZ. For, but for the ships, the value of GZ is not given for inclination. What they do is from K, you draw a line parallel to the GZ where it meets this vertical line through B1 is the point called N and this KN values are given in the tables against the displacement. So this is the KN. Now if you look at the KN in this diagram, the position of N or the distance KN is dependent on how much the center of buoyancy moves and this movement of center of buoyancy definitely is a function of underwater volume. So KN actually does not depend on displacement. It is better to say that the KN depends on the underwater volume that the ship has. So uh, once again the point of caution, whenever you see the KN values, if the ship is in fresh water or brackish water, first you multiply the displacement by the increasing factor that is the salt water density divided by the dock water density and whatever figure you get for that you will see the KN. So this was just a brief explanation of the KN. KN values are given for the ship for different angles of wheel and for di different displacements, right? From this we will derive the GZ because you can see in this diagram whatever is the distance kg, this distance kg will be different for different loading conditions, right? So this kg value which is different for different loading conditions of the same ship, in this right angle triangle, this particular part from here to here say kp is actually kg sin theta. So if you minus kg sin theta from kn, what we will get is the gz. So on ship, we have the kn tables, we can get kn for any angle of yield for any draft or any displacement and thereafter we will subtract kg sin theta from kn to get the writing lever that is the gz. Now we will do a numerical whereby we will learn how to draw the gz curve. So I will do uh, a numerical from my own book called Complete uh, Ship Stability. This numerical is on page 149 and the numerical reads MV Alpha Ship MV Alpha Ship at a forward draft of 7.37 and the aft draft 9.46 has a kg of 8.36 meters kg is 8.36 
meters and the free surface moment of 1272 the FSM is equal to 1272 angle of flooding is 43 degrees angle of flooding is 43 degrees draw curve of statical stability up to an angle of 40 degrees calculate her dynamical stability at angle of 40 degrees right using the ordinates at 10 degrees interval to do this question we need the hydrostatic table for mv alpha shell so the extract of the hydrostatic table is as follows you have a hydrostatic draft 8.4 8.6 meters right the displacement and km is given for these drafts and thereafter you are given the KN values for these displacement 25,200, 25,900 and the KN values are given for 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees and 40 degrees uh, respectively. Now the first thing that you would do when four and a half drafts are given is find out what is the hydrostatic draft. Whenever the four and a half draft is given for the ship shape a vessel or the data is given for a vessel like this. How do we find out the hydrostatic draft? So we have forward and aft draft. The forward draft is 7.370. The aft draft is 9.746. 2.376 is the trim. Now, a correction is applied to the aft draft that is trim into LCF upon LBP in order to find out the hydrostatic draft. So hydrostatic draft actually is aft draft minus trim into LCF upon LBP. So let us look at uh, the hydrostatic draft now. Trim is 2.376 meters. So 2.376 into LCF. LCF is 84.123. LCF can be seen for the mean draft at this stage. Equal to divide by the LBP which is 171.792. That gives me... Uh, the correction to the aft draft so uh, minus how much is the aft draft 9.746 9.746 that gives me 8.582 meters 8.582 meters which is between 8.4 and 8.6 now for 8.582 meters i want to find out what is the displacement what is the km I tell the students whenever any interpolation has to be done where the first line first column is given in increasing order that means 8.4 and 8.6 thereafter that means 8.6 is bigger than 8.4 then how do we interpolate the difference of these two is written in the denominator as 0.2 and the difference of 8.582 and 8.4 that is 0.1 H2 will be written in the numerator and this gives me the factor 0 0.182 divided by 0 0.2 the factor is 0 0.91 0 0.91 this is the factor that will help us to find out what is the displacement for this hydrostatic draft so uh, what you are supposed to do is <clears throat> once we have got this factor the second value minus first value multiply by the factor whatever you get add to the first value right so you don't have to worry whether the second item that is the second column things are increasing or decreasing you know you can do interpolation you can do extrapolation also let's do it practically the second value is 25313.4 minus the first value 24637.2 equals multiplied by the factor point 91 equals add to the first 24637.2 that gives me 25252.54 25252.54 this is the displacement and let us also find out the km then the second value is 9.818 minus the first value 9.824 equal to multiplied by factor 0.91 equal to add to the first 9.824 that gives me 9.818 km transverse is 9.818 that is km transverse 
the interpolation is done in a similar way so for 30 degrees it is like 5.073 minus the first value 5.110 equal to multiplied by the factor 0 0.075 equal to plus the first value is 5.11 that gives me 5.107 5.107 and for 40 degrees, uh, 6.422 minus 6.466 equal to multiplied by factor equal to plus the first value that is 6.466. That gives me 6.463. 6.463. So these are the can values which I have got for 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees and 40 degrees. From these Kn values, I want to find out what is the Gz values for these angles. So for that, I have to minus Kg fluid sine theta. Now, uh, free surface correction, as you know, is free surface moment divided by displacement. The correction is uh, positive for Kg and the correction is negative for Gm. So since we are applying it to Kg, it will be added. So free surface correction is 1, 2, 7, 2 divided by displacement 2525.2.54 2525 2.54 equals so the free surface correction is 0 0.050 0, you may say so FSC is 0 0.050 now kg fluid is uh, kg solid is 8.36 so plus 8.36 gives me 8.410 so kg fluid is 8.410 so what i have to do is from the table of kn i must minus kg fluid sine theta to get the gz values okay uh, probably we can do the calculation here itself minus kg fluid sine theta so kg fluid is 8.410 into sine of 10 degrees that gives me 1.460 1.460 and 8.41 into sine of 20 degrees gives me 2.876 2.876 and then 8.4 into sine 30 which is half that gives me 4.2 and 8.4 into sine 40 degrees that gives me 5.39 and 5.4 so uh, the value of gz that I get is the difference 0 0.363 and here it is uh, 0 0.707 here it is 70 0 0.907 and over here it is 36 1.063 i need to make a gz curve and let me make the gz curve what I can do is I have to plot up to 40 degrees so what I can do is uh, 1 centimeter is equal to 5 degrees so 10 uh, degrees will be 2 centimeters then you have 20 degrees you have 30 degrees you have 40 degrees over here that is the x-axis on the y-axis I can see the value going up to 1 so what I can do is uh, I can do 1 centimeter is equal to 0.2 meters so this is 0.2 and then this is 0.4 and then this is 0.6 and then this is 0.8 and this is 1 so that is how I make y-axis let us draw this gz curve now at 10 degrees it is 3 point, 0.363 so 0.3 is here and 0.35 is here 
0.363 would be something like this and at 20 degrees it is 0 0.707 20 degrees 20 degrees it is 0 0.707 it is uh, almost this way over here and for 30 degrees it is 0.907 30 degrees and 0 0.907 which is uh, something like this and for 40 degrees it is 1.063 1.063 now over here it is 1 meter and 1.063 would be something like this so this is my GZ curve up to 40 degrees now in this question uh, I am expected to find out the dynamical stability up to 40 degrees so dynamical stability up to 40 degrees would be uh, finding out the area under the curve up to 40 degrees by Simpsons you have four segments that means rule number one can be applied in the Simpsons the uniform separation is 10 degrees that means 10 upon 57.3 radian that is the uniform separation and because the data is straight away available we can we can very easily find out the area under the curve so probably I can uh, write the values of ordinate at say 0, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees and 40 degrees right so at 0 it is 0, uh, 0.363 the value at 10 and then 0 0.707, 0 0.907 and then 1.063 meters are the values of the ordinates that is the GZ value the Simpsons multiplier will be 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. After multiplication, I get 1.063, 3.628, and 0. So these are the products after. Uh, the Simpsons multiplier. Let's add all of them. The sum is 7.557. So you've seen that uh, I put uh, the GZ values as ordinate and there are five ordinates so four segments and four segments means Simpsons first rule 14241. I multiply them and then the sum is 7.557. With this sum that is 7.557 I can very easily find out the area. So area would be the uniform separation that is 10 upon 57.3 one third of it that is h by 3 and the sum is 7.557. This is the meter radian. Uh, I got the area in the form of meter radian. So it is 75.57 75.57 divide by the bracket starts 57.3 into 3 bracket closes equal to 0.434 as 0 0.440 you can say 0 0.440 meter radians so displacement is 25254.52 multiplied by 0 0.440 meter radian you can say 1 1 1 1 2 tons meter radian is the dynamic stability till 40 degrees so in this question we saw how for a ship shaped vessel where the data is given in terms of kn hydrostatic particulars etc are given how to draw a gz curve and after drawing the gz curve how with the help of simpsons to find out the area under the curve area under the curve and meter radian multiplied by the displacement gives me dynamical stability which is 11112 tons meter radian